Moin ihr wunderbare Menschen des Interwebs, ich begrüße euch ganz herzlich zurück zu meinem Let's Play von The Great Ace Attorney Chronicles. Wir werden uns einmal auf den Weg machen zu Van Wieks, weil ich gerne zuerst mit ihm reden wollen würde. Mal gucken, ob er da ist. Ich finde es übrigens auch sehr, sehr schön, dass Van Sieks, und das kann man deutlich sehen, ähm, vielleicht jetzt nicht sein Charakter unbedingt, aber so die, sein Erscheinen, seine Aufmachung, sein, ich meine, sein, sein Charakter teilweise erinnert mich schon etwas an Edward. Also das muss ich schon sagen, dass ähm, mich das schon ein wenig an ihn erinnert. Und auch das Büro hat so ein bisschen finde ich, ähm, erinnert mich so ein bisschen an etwas. Natürlich nicht exakt dasselbe, aber manche Elemente, finde ich schon, haben die beiden gemeinsam. Oh, so this is the legendary Reaper's office? Yes, it appears so. It sends a chill down your spine, doesn't it? What an amazingly deathly atmosphere. That hooded figure was so still, I hadn't noticed his or her presence. I wonder who it is. What are you doing here? He's as unwelcoming as I thought he would be. Actually, maybe even more though, so... Oh, I... I am... I'm glad to see you're well. I am. So, who's the person over by the wall being punished for something or other? No punishment is taking place here. That's my ap apprentice, and he's sitting there of his own free will. I didn't know you had been... I didn't know you had an apprentice. It must be the same person who was pictured in the newspaper. He's very able in combat, a requisite skill for anyone under my... Uh huh. Are you referring to the attack on the Reaper that was reported in the papers? The Reaper. I'd be more interested to know the Reaper's true identity myself. Assuming that it is such a fabled fiend genuinely inhabits our great courtrooms. Lord Stronghat said that the assault last night was some sort of revenge attack. True. Carried out by henchmen of Ori Asman's criminal organization. The investigation meant their arrests were imminent. Presumably some hoped to kill me before that happened. Ori Asman. He's always masqueraded as one of London's most powerful financiers, a global investor. But his enormous wolf came to him by under underhand means via his criminal activities. And he used that money to buy himself a verdict of not guilty when he found himself in court, didn't he? Being prosecuted by you, Mr. Reaper. But the man got his... ...coma pants in the end. Yesterday, in fact, in extraordinary circumstances, it was a most unusual cause of death. I know about that, it was super high voltage inst instantaneous kinesis going wrong. Mr. Asman died when the demonstration on the public experimentation stage ended in an enormous explosion. Correct. And you think I have some kind of divine ability to cause an accident like that to happen, do you? Well, no, that does seem a little far-fetched. If this man really is the fabled reaper, then he has to be innocent of this particular death at least. It's strange how this has worked out, isn't it, Rona? I mean... What with you taking on the professor? I mean, what with you taking on the professor's defense for the trial tomorrow? What? You're going to be defending him? Um, yes, that's right, though I barely know the man's name yet, to be honest. Albert. Albert Hairbrain. That's right, do you know him by any chance? Of course. He's a contemporary of mine. We are we were at the university together. What? I would understand that Professor Herbrain was from Germany though. 
Erbrands from a respectable British family. After graduating from the University of London, he moved to Germany to carry out research, that's all. Okay, das erklärt den, das erklärt den Nachnamen. So we were students together. I was in the fa faculty of law, of course, and he in science, so our paths rarely crossed. But curiously, we got along, though I've not met him since my university days. I certainly didn't expect our next encounter to take this form. And with you of all people representing him. Only if I make it out of this office alive. He's actually been charged with murder, it seems. Yes, I know. Because the prosecution will be handled by me. By you? But, but you made it sound as if you and the professor had been friends. We are friends, it's true. Then why would you do this? The Reaper is the prosecutor. There's no there is nothing anyone can do to save him. He's doomed. What's learned from Zeke's thinking? What do you mean by what you said before? If you would like to know the Reaper's true identity, does it mean... I'm a crown prosecutor and immortal like any other. I'm not demigod. Am I? Am I gone? But they have all died, haven't they? The people you've prosecuted, I mean. Whether or not the trial ended in a conviction or an acquittal. Those I prosecute are the vilest wretches of our society. People who, without question, deserve to be found guilty. The world is a better place without them. But that's not true of Mr. Natsume, for example. He wasn't a vile wretch at all. Nor was Ginny, in fact. She's ever so hardworking now. I can't deny that since I encountered you, things have taken a turn. But the point is this. If any of those vile wretches that escaped justice subsequently died in mysterious circumstances, it was at the hand of their own kind. It's not my work. Lord Strong had said the same. Same. He believes you are not involved in any way. But you were attacked by those ruffians because they believe it's true. The fact is, since people started to call me the Reaper of the Bailey, the number of serious crimes in the capital has dropped substantially. It would appear that even the most hardened criminals can be made fearful for their lives. Do you mean to say... I mean to say that if my pseudonym serves a useful purpose, I adopt it gladly and with honor. But it's putting you in danger. You could be killed. If that is my fate, let God decide. Lord von Zeeks. Okay, aber ich kann ihm jetzt nicht wirklich irgendwas zeigen. Was ich gerne eigentlich machen würde, ist die Identität von der Person da drüben rausfinden. It really looks like a punishment to me. I've never seen someone sitting like that before. He hasn't moved a muscle since we arrived. Do you think perhaps he's dead? If he was dead, Runo, he wouldn't be sitting up, would he? Well, anyway, dead or alive, he's not overly approachable, is he? I don't think he's going to talk to us. He's not dead. Okay, but we dürfen here, leider, mit dieser Person nicht reden. Zumindest noch nicht. Oh, look, it's a scale model of the Great Exhibition Showground. That's amazing. I wonder why it's here. Perhaps he made it to take his mind off the sadness of being too busy to attend in person. Or perhaps he's too embarrassed to queue up for a ticket. Surely it's obviously obvious that I'm using it as an investigative aid. You Nipponese have no business painting others as overly reserved. I really didn't think he would overhear that. Yay, gut. Ich meine, das wird jetzt ein Porträt von ihm sein. Das gucken wir uns noch an, aber ansonsten glaube ich, ist hier nichts Wichtiges, außer dass ich gerade rechts noch Fledermäuse gesehen habe. The portrait really dominates the room, doesn't it? It's a very majestic outfit and pose, but sadly, whoever painted it didn't do a very good job of capture, capturing Lord von Sieg's facial features. Yes, you're right. I mean, it's not far off, but the artist has... Exaggerated his subject's handsomeness, I think. 
That reminds me, I heard Emperor Napoleon of France ordered artists to make him look more attractive when they painted him. Oh, vain. That's really not an attractive quality in a person, is it? That portrait does not dis... The by... The me. Surely that's immediately obvious. Then, who is it? I would just tip that this is his father, right? Okay, er möchte es uns nicht sagen, aber ja, ich könnte mir vorstellen, dass das eben dann sein Vater ist. Kann ich die Fledermäuse angucken? Ja, yes, the Reaper family, family, familiars, I expect. But what about the mute man in the dark cloak? I thought he was, I thought he was the familiar, just not the flying kind. He must be a dear friend of, of Mr. Reaper then. I think the familiar idea is more likely. Scary though, either way. Okay, <lacht> gut. Ähm, naja, aber ich glaube, sonst mehr können wir hier nicht wirklich angucken, was uns weiterhelfen würde. Wir können auch gerade nicht wirklich mehr mit ihm reden. Dann würde ich sagen, machen wir uns einfach mal auf den Weg ins Gefängnis und reden mit dem Professor. The Warden said Sally Levin. That's this one. Oh, there's someone curled up in a ball in the back corner, look! What's his name again? Professor Albert Hairbrain, wasn't it? Um, excuse me, Professor? Who are you? I'm Ryunosuke Naruhoro, I'm a defense lawyer. A lawyer? Uh, was it something I said? Uh, a lawyer, you say? Would you be here, um, about the experiment? Are you going to defend my hypothesis? Your hypothesis? Sorry, I don't... Yesterday's demonstration! That demonstration was... That magnificent demonstration was... It was an out-and-out -out success by anyone's calculations! But, but, but despite that, no one listens, no lawyer believes in the science when it's explained they all leave at high ve ve velocity. Now is probably not a good time to mention that your seal made my concentration leave for a while too. Um, you mentioned the demonstration yesterday. The papers have called it a spectacular failure. After all, a man died in an explosion, didn't he? Yes, you could in interpret the results that way if you really wanted to. Well, I, I suppose in the strictest sense, the experiment was a failure, but at the same time it was a great success. You've lost me. I saw it with my own eyes, right there in front of me. Mr. Esmond was spontaneously dis... dis... Dem disassembled. Until then, everything was going exactly as my calculations had predicted. At that point, he should have been beamed to the Crystal Tower by ins instantaneous kinesis. However... The machine exploded and Mr. Asman in fact perished. Yes, I can't deny that part of the experiment was a failure. So what you're really saying is the large explosion that killed Mr. Asman was an accident, correct? But the bigwigs had you arrested on suspicion of murder. I was responsible for a man's death, that is the immutable truth here. And for that I wish to be punished, at once. But, 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 uh, murder? Never in a million years. It was an accident. Simply an accident. I see. Hurley, Hurley and I were talking this morning, you know. He said the situation would change completely depending on whether it was treated as an accident or murder. How exactly? Well, if it really was an accident, then the professor's machine would be kept in protective custody. On what grounds? Ah, yes, it's newly established here in Britain, the Special Dispensation for Scientific Equipment Act. That one passed me by. But if the case is treated as murder, then they will say my machine was the murder weapon and they will be able to pour over it as much as they like. If they examine it in detail, they will find out how it's made and then they will be able to copy my idea. My precious hypothesis will be stolen. The machine must be protected from that all at all costs. That's why it's imperative this whole incident is shown to have been an accident in tomorrow's trial. I see now. Is 
Though in short, there was a terrible accident at the Great Exhibition Showground yesterday. Yes, or rather no, the devil is in the details. Strictly speaking, there was a terrible explosion. Sounds the same to me. You were demonstrating super high voltage instant instantaneous kinesis, weren't you? How fascinating! Als wenn sie noch ein paar Mal sagen, kriege ich das dann richtig hin, so richtig flott, flott das Wort, äh, Wort auszusprechen. Humans like all matter are made up of particles that are held together by electrical bonds. So it must be possible using a sufficiently high voltage to break the bonds and beam the particles through space. Aber, ähm, okay, ich will darauf eigentlich nicht so tief eingehen, weil das nämlich zu lange dauert, aber, ähm, Teleportation, okay. Wenn du jetzt deine Moleküle, also du musst ja die Moleküle zersetzen für Teleportation, ja, also deine kompletten Moleküle, alles muss ja zersetzt werden, dann muss das, dann wird das teleportiert, die Moleküle werden an einen anderen Ort teleportiert und dann müssen die Moleküle sich wieder so zusammensetzen. Aber das wäre doch unmöglich, also wie willst du das denn machen, dass sich die Moleküle erst ähm, zersetzen und dann am anderen Ort wieder richtig zusammensetzen? verstehe ich halt nicht, wie das dann funktionieren kann. Also ich kann mir schon vorstellen, dass das Zersetzen funktioniert, aber wie funktioniert dann wieder das Zusammensetzen? Wie soll das denn wieder gehen? Und wenn wir dann nicht einfach nur ein Klon von uns selbst? Wenn das so wäre? Also wir wären doch dann nicht mehr unser richtiges Selbst. Also ja, tatsächlich habe ich mir über sowas schon mal Gedanken gemacht, aber ich möchte jetzt nicht wirklich zu tief drauf eingehen, weil man darüber sehr lange diskutieren kann. Ähm, um, that's, that's it in a nutshell. That's my idea, you see? That's my amazing hypothesis. Gosh, that's... Unimaginably high level science. Oh, but dare to imagine it, dare to dream of such incredible technology. Ich meine, ich fände es geil, wenn man sich wirklich, wenn Teleportation real wäre. Ich fände das richtig cool. Just think, one moment I could be here in the cell and the next I could be at the Great Exhibition again. Well, yes, that would be incredible. And the next, in the mere blink of an eye, I could be at the Great Parisian Theater, say. The possibilities are endless. The whole of our va vast planet would be within reach. So no more hiding in wardrobes on rocky seas for 50 days. I don't really see it like that. What do you mean, Iris? Well, if you could travel anywhere in the world instantly, the planet wouldn't really seem vast anymore, would it? I think it would feel like it had shrunk. My world, that's, that's exactly right. What are the implications, or what does this mean? Oops, that's got Professor Bunny Brain really worried by the look of it. Clearly this is yet another case of just because you can doesn't mean you should, I suppose. The point is, my calculations are flawless, the science works, but without a pr practical demonstration it means nothing, and that's always the fly in the on on man. Because practical demonstrations cost a lot of money, money that young scientists like you don't have. That's exactly it, yes. Harley's always complaining about it. He says the government should invest more in science. Well, anyway, I bumped into him at the right time. I met the well-known investor Mr. Esman. The victim who died in yesterday's terrible accident, you mean? The full name of the man who died in yesterday's accident was Mr. Ori Asman, wasn't it? What exactly was your relationship with the man? He first visited me in my laboratory in Germany a year age ago now. He said he wanted to invest in my immaculate hypothesis. I thanked my lucky stars. I see, so you hadn't really known each other until then. Money for scientific research, I'm so envious. As far as I was concerned, the man, the man was an angel. Really? An archangel, even. He was prepared to fund a practical demonstration of my hypothesis for presentation at the Great Exhibition, and if that went well, I could expect an additional financial support for my research from the British government. Mr. Esmon provided me with money and an exceptional engineer. He produced a machine to my precise specifications. But then your dreams were blown to dust in one enormous explosion. As you can see, I owed everything to Mr. Esmond. I would never, ever have thought of taking the man's life. Well, he seems genuine enough. I don't think he's lying. 
Okay. Ähm. Aber. Ich kann jetzt nicht mehr wirklich über mehr mit dem reden, oder? Ich kann jetzt nur den Zeitungsartikel zeigen. How could this have happened? You must feel awful, as well as the man losing his life. The Crystal Tower was greatly damaged, too. I know what happened. It must have been that. That? The day before the demonstration, I had my usual meal of Frank Frankfurters at the hotel, hotel restaurant. When I paid the bill, they gave me three shillings too much in change. But instead of saying anything, I just slipped the coins into my pocket. They are still there now. It's divine retribution for my wrongdoing. That's what this is. For a scientist, he has some very illogical anecdotes. Long and illogical. Okay, aber ich kann über nix mit ihm reden. Ich kann mir jetzt auch nicht wirklich was zeigen, außer vielleicht noch meinen hier. Ich, hier, ich bin Anwalt. Guck mal. Ah, fascinating, yes. In Japan, where I come from, it's the symbol of a defense lawyer. Wearing it is very bracing, I find. Mm, your words make some sense to me, but they are entirely illogical. What do you mean? Well, for example, I find this white laboratory coat that I wear for my work very bracing too. However, in my case, there is a perfectly logical reason for that feeling. Really, what is it? I purchased the wrong size by mistake. This one is too small for me. The sleeves especially are extremely bracing. I can barely move my wrists. That's what you call logical, is it? Of course, it's entirely logical. That's science, Mr. Naruhoro. Mhm. Mm okay. Gut, ich kann aber mit ihm nicht weiter reden. Wo gehen wir hin? Was machen wir? Ähm... Kann einmal bei Mr. Schaums vorbeigucken noch? Ne, hier hat sich gar nichts verändert. Mhm. Aber mit ihm... Wir können mit ihm halt über, auch über nichts mehr reden. Hä? Wo soll ich hin? Hier gibt's auch nichts mehr. Okay, ähm... Ähm, ähm, ähm... Eben hatte ich das doch schon gezeigt, oder? Lord von Sieg's about the article in his paper. Ah, oh, yes. It seems there was a reporter nearby when the little skirmish took place. Okay, nee, ich habe ihn das noch nicht gezeigt gehabt. I had no idea I've been photographed. It was careless of me. It looks as though it was taken after the people who attacked you had run away, though. Rest assured, the police have already apprehended every last one of them. But there's someone else fighting alongside you, it seems. And I think it's the same man who's sitting over there as we speak, isn't it? As I mentioned already, he's my apprentice. Perhaps you could tell us a little more about him? Ah, okay. He's in my... Yeah, yes. He's in my told age to become a prosecutor. Ich habe das Wort leider gebutschert, es tut mir leid, aber auf jeden Fall ist er unter den Fittichen von Fancy X, damit ein Anwalt wird. So you could say he's my apprentice, I suppose. Like, ah, like you are to Hurley then, Bruno. I don't remember taking an apprenticeship with a great detective. He's currently compiling a report about last night's attack. Looks like he's wearing some kind of mask. On Lord Strongheart's orders, nobody knows the man's face, or indeed his identity. But why would you agree to take on such a clearly suspicious individual? Lord Strongheart's orders again. He's not one for meaningless follies. There will be a good reason for his actions. I hope you're right. The task is complete. Good. In that case, you can collect, collate uh, all the briefs. Uh, 
Uh, nice to meet you. Back to work again. That was really strange though. I've never met the man before. I didn't even know he existed and yet... Somehow it didn't feel like, feel like our first encounter. Don't bother trying to converse with him. He says nothing to anybody from outside this office. Lord Strongheart has strictly forbidden it. I see. Why are you so interested in my apprentice anyway? Oh, no, I mean, sorry, I didn't mean to... The way he stood there so casually, yet with that flawless posture... It couldn't be. Ja, ich habe, als ich ihn das erste Mal gesehen habe, habe ich tatsächlich gedacht, dass, also habe ich so gedacht, hm, könnte das Kasuma sein. Das habe ich mir so irgendwie gedacht, aber ich meine, wir haben äh, wir, halt, wir haben ja den, den Mordfall untersucht auf dem Schiff. Also, ich meine, gut, wir haben nie wieder, also wir haben ja diese, wir haben ja die Leiche nie wieder gesehen. Also in dem Sinne kann das auch sein, dass er weggebracht wurde und dann eben trotzdem noch am Leben war. Aber, äh, äh, könnte, könnte sein, könnte nicht sein. Ah, yes, there's something I've been meaning to ask you. What's that? That Nipponese man, is he faring well? I'm sorry. The one arrested twice in succession six months ago, with the stoop, and the mustache, and the jitters. Oh, Mr. Natsume, you mean? I'm not sure he would be very pleased to find out you identified him from that last Rono. He's fine, thank you. In fact, I received a letter from him by International Post, Post only the other day. I see. Well, I think we can end our discussion there, don't you? There's little time left before tomorrow's trial. I advise you to spend it in investigating the case. Yes, thank you for the advice and for the conversation. I can't believe he's asking after Sasaki-san, after an Nipponese. I'm not sure whether to feel happy about that or worried. Never imagined that Mr. Reaper would be friends with a mad scientist, did you? That's a turn up for the box. A mad scientist? Uh, you mean Professor Herbrain? Yes, it might be worth quizzing the professor about his relationship with Lord Francis, I think. Okay. Dann gehen wir jetzt nochmal ins Gefängnis und ich schätze mal, dass wir dann noch eine weitere Option bekommen sollten zum Reden. Wieso drücke ich Move? I understand Lord von Six is a friend of yours from your university, university days. Yes, that's right. He was studying law whilst I was studying science. What was he like back then? A good question. Unassuming, gentlemanly and all around nice fellow, really. Sorry, I think you misheard me. I'm talking about the cold-hearted, merciless prosecutor Baruch von Siegs. What was he like when he was at university? Talk about a leading question, Bruno. As I said, an assuming and extremely pleasant gentleman. After all, he is the little darling of the von Siegs family with all its great aristocratic origins. I, I didn't realize he had quite such noble blood. Little darling? It was a bit of a shock when I came back to Britain and learned what he'd become. The Reaper of the Bailey, no less. Yes, that's right. I did hear, though, that there was a very big event in his life that completely changed him after graduate graduation. Really? What sort of event? Um, I'm sorry. But I don't know anymore. I wasn't in the country at the time. I was in Germany already. Uh, yes, of course. If he's heard all about the Reaper, I really don't have the heart to tell him that Lord Franzix will be the prosecutor in court tomorrow. So, Professor, let me just make absolutely sure I've understood you properly. The huge explosion that occurred yesterday, that was an accident, you're saying? You had no intent to harm the victim, who was in fact the sole, sole investor in your work, is that correct? As correct as two squared is four, I swear it. Yes, it's true that the man perished in a machine of my invention. So I know what I'm for, that I'm far from blameless in all this. But still, I would never use my dis 
undercover reason my intentions to take a person's life, not in a centillion years. I'm a man, man of science, it's all I know. You have to believe me, please. Do you believe me? Do you believe in my hypothesis? Science is the, is the pursuit of truth, you know? I've always believed that, all my life. I'm afraid I don't know much about science or your theories, but I do believe you. And I will fight to prove your innocence with all my might. I'm a man of the law. It's all I know. You have to believe me, please. When I went to live in Germany after I graduated, I learned something very important. Nationality, class, lineage, none of that matters. As long as you try your hardest, you can achieve anything. Thank you for that, professor. And thank you in advance for defending me tomorrow in court. Ich denke mal, weil... Von Siegs... Ich weiß gar nicht, irgendwie ist da ja schon mal was durchgesickert. Und ich glaube, dass dieser Vorfall, den jetzt der Professor angesprochen hat, dass der eben damit zu tun hat... Ah, genau. Wo Van Sieg sagte, er wurde ja von einem Nipponis ähm, betrogen. Und ich könnte mir dann eben vorstellen, dass das dieser Fall war, wo er sich dann eben auch so sehr verändert hat, den jetzt der Professor ja angesprochen hat. Und deswegen er so abgeneigt ist gegenüber ähm, den Leuten aus dem Osten. Alright, Bruno, it's time. Time to visit the Great Exhibition. Uh, sorry. Well, that's where the incident happened, isn't it? Yes, I suppose that's true. Time to investigate at last. Okay. Experiment. The, the experimental stage. 